dynamic routing system. When you do not know the exact same names ahead of time, and you want to create routes from dynamic data, you can always use the dynamic routes. So by convention, a dynamic segment can be created by wrapping a folder's name in a square bracket. For example, the ID of a post, the slug, or any other stuff that you want to get dynamically. Without further ado, let's quickly practicalize it. So let's say, for example, come back to the app, and then we want to target another name called Paul. So I'm going to do slash Paul. Hit the enter key. It says this page could not be found. You know why? It is simply because we do not have any directory in our app folder that can map to the URL of Paul. So we do not have any Paul page created elsewhere. Okay, so we just want to get this Paul over here dynamically. Alright, so there is a system that can be used to solve this problem even without having to create a folder for Paul. And that system is the dynamic routing system. Within this names package over here, right click, new folder. Recall that the convention is a square bracket. So you have to wrap it up in a square bracket. For example, if you want to get the ID of a blog dynamically, you can do ID. Okay. But in this case, we are dealing with users and names. So I'm going to do name just like this. Hit the enter key and then it is being registered. Beautiful. The next in line is to create a file right within the dynamic folder. And I'm going to call it page.tss. Let's export the page component. So you can pause the video to type the whole of these stuffs over here, or you can check within the description to actually copy and paste the component like this. So we don't have to type it from scratch. All right, I talk too much. Right over in the div, we are going to have a h1 tag. And then I'm going to do other names are good. To display the dynamic data, the first thing we are going to do is to extract the route parameter, which in this case is the name over here. Yeah, so this is the dynamic parameter. So what I'm going to do, right, we're on the interface page props. I'm going to do params. And then we are going to have an object. We are going to pass in the name, which is the dynamic params. And then we want to set it to string. Take note, this guy over here should be the exact same stuff you have over here. So if you do, for example, names, and then here is name, it is not going to work for you. So you can now understand that this exactly is the dynamic file that we are extracting. Simple as that. So come here and then we are going to pass in params. Having done that, let's quickly display the params over here. So I'm going to do params dot name. So on the browser, we are going to do users slash Paul. And now we can see other names are Paul. Let me do something. I think we have to stylize the head one tag so that we can increase the font. So let's quickly give the class name. Within the class name, we are going to do text dash 9XL. Good. All right. This is good. So we have Paul over here. And then if we want to catch another dynamic name, for example, we want to catch Daisy. Can you see? And here we have Daisy. Let me show you something that will blow your mind. So if we try to console log params, let's see what we are going to have. When you save, here you are going to see Daisy. But when you check it out on the console, Nothing is on the console. You know why? It is simply because by default, Next.js run on the server side. So when you check out the terminal, you are going to see Daisy. So if you want to switch from server side rendering to client side, all you have to do at the top, 
right in a single quote or in a double quote you are going to do use client just like this and then terminate it with a semicolon save now you no longer have any stuffs right here on the terminal but when you go back to the browser console you are going to find it here can you see perfect now i want to show you something else that is very important so, for example, we want to catch a particular blog post in our application. Yeah, so we have to use the ID to catch that post. So now I'm going to do here Daisy slash one. OK, when you hit the enter key, it says this page could not be found. So here exactly is where the concept of catch all routes comes in. Let me quickly show you how to implement catch all route to solve this problem. Go back to the VS code. So right click on the name within the square bracket and then we have to rename. During the rename process, all we have to do is to spread up this name like this with three dots. So this exactly will solve the problem of catch all route. And then you have to say yes to it, to the changes you made. When you go back to the browser, can you see? Now we have Daisy one, which is supposedly the ID. Even if you do slash one slash ABC slash QTY slash POP, you are going to get everything down here. So if we check out the console, you're going to see an object. Open up the object and then you're going to find everything right within the array. Looks good. So this exactly is how to implement dynamic routing. Something very important that you have to take note of is that the name on the query object correspond to the dynamic segment we specify as the file name. This guy over here. So this guy will correspond to this guy. And then you can display it here. So that is one of the important points that you have to take note of to avoid mistakes. Okay, let me do something. For example, let me do here, names. Okay, we also have to do names over here. When you save the application on the browser, let's reload. It is not gonna work. Can you see? So whatever you do here should correspond to the dynamic segment, which is the file here. And then also, if you want to implement catch or route, you have to spread up the folder name with three dot operators. All right, guys. So this exactly is how to implement uh, the dynamic routing system in Next.js. If you find this video helpful, all you have to do is to subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, and then tell me your opinion in the comment section. This is all for now and in the next lecture, I will show you how to implement a button click to redirect you from one component to the other or to redirect you from one page to the other.